Hello, myself, Dr. Indranil Haldar. I'm a pulmonologist heading the Department of Pulmonary Medicine, College of Medicine, JNM Hospital. Today, I am here to discuss on the management of cough, especially dry cough, and the use of nostopin, which is a veritable drug. Just cough, which is one of the common presenting complaint. It accounts for about 30% of the people, both in adult and pediatrics, who present to a primary care setting. It's true that cough is a defense mechanism and helps the airways to prevent from foreign body or any secretion, but in some condition, it becomes excessive and potentially harmful to the airway mucosa. In that way, cough adversely affects the quality of life, sleep, and productivity at work. In elderly, it may lead to urinary incontinence and also depression. Now, how is cough classified? It can be based on the duration of the cough. So acute cough is cough which is less than three weeks, subacute is three to eight weeks, and chronic more than eight weeks. So why is this classification important? Because it helps us in narrowing down our differentials of cough so that we can find out what is the cough of cause of the cough and treat accordingly. Now, if we see the Indian consensus on diagnosis of cough in the primary care setting, and this is adapted from the Journal of the Association of Physicians published in 2019. So what is recommended for differential diagnosis of cough at the primary setting? They have clearly stated that cough may be treated empirically and may not require aggressive investigation on, in cough, which is, uh, or it is characterized by red flag sign, or it is persisting for more than two weeks. Empirical treatment in acute cough associated with infectious cause consists mostly of cough expect suppressant or expectorant, depending on what is the type of the cough. In fact, if we are thinking of infective etiology, antibiotics for bacterial infection may be given if it is suspected or proved accordingly. Now coming to the most important topic of a discussion, cough management and the role of antitussin. The mechanism of action of this antitussin. This chart looks a bit complex, but if we see here, the centrally acting antitussin act by suppressing the cough leaf flex at the medullary cortex. So this is the centrally acting, and this, the centrally acting antitussin acts here. That is the medullary cough reflex. So usually they are, the centrally acting may be opioid or non-opioid. The opioid antitussin acts on the mu and the copper receptors, whereas the non-opioid drug, the mu and the copper receptors here, these are the opioid antitussin that acts, and the non-opioid acts mainly on the sigma receptors. The peripherally acting antitussin suppress the cop center located in the peripheral sites. These are the peripheral sites and mainly the vagus nerve are innervated here. As already told, the centrally acting antitussin may be opioid the, and the non-opioid. The non-opioid, the most common example is the noscopin and the dextromethorphan. And the opioid, the commonly used antitussin are the codeine and the falcodine, the hydrocodine and hydromorphine. Noscopin, which is a non-opioid antitussin, it acts both as a central and a peripheral mechanism, centrally acts through the non-opioid sigma receptors and peripherally acts by inhibiting the bradykinin-induced cough. This is important. Again, the bradykinin-induced cough is important because when you will be treating this COVID cough, which one of the mechanisms in bradykinin-induced, which is very effective, and also effective in AC inhibitor induced cough because they mediate through the bradykinin receptors. And the real advantage is that it is devoid of opioid side effect and abuse potential. No stopping so better antitussive efficacy, greater cough suppression in half hour and one hour post cough induction. No stopping showed better cough suppression and significantly less adverse effect compared to codeine and dihydrocodeine growth. Now coming to the, one of the most important managing this pandemic cough due to this COVID. 
So what we have already highlighted is that it's an AC2 mediator uh, infection by SARS-CoV, the novel virus which causes COVID-19. And it may present with the dry cough, shortness of breath, pneumonia, in even the mildest form, it presents with drop in the oxygen saturation. And the pathogenesis are numerous, but it involves excessive immune and inflammatory rates response. And ultimately in the severest form, it may be related to cytokine storm. So what it does, it binds and inhibits the AC2 activity results in increased pro-inflammatory molecules, which includes the bradykinin, increased release of the inflammatory cytokines Q and F necrotic factor alpha, also increases the effect of bradykinin. And since the ACE2 receptor activity cannot be altered in COVID-19 infection, we may reduce the severity of symptoms by decreasing the bradykinin activity. So just to elaborate further the use of noscopin in COVID cough, evidence suggests that noscopin suppresses the ACE inhibitor induced and bradykinin receptor agonist induced dry cough. Clinical studies have shown that noscopin 15 milligram three times was highly effective in relieving the AC inhibitor induced cough within a week to the tune of about 90%. This finding indicates that noscopin can reduce bradykinin mediated cytokine release occurs due to AC2 inhibitor is by the SARS CoV 2. So, one of the common symptoms, the dry cough, can induce tissue damage in the lungs and can be relieved by noscopin. It's really a safe alternative to codeine, which has already been discussed because of the disadvantage of codeine and its opioid-like effect. And unlike dextromethorphan, COVID does not act on the NMDA receptors, a hence devoid of CNS-related adverse effect, which is also very important. Noscopin, which is real, a veritable anti tussive drug, a non-narcotic with proven anti tussive effect, long since 1930s and we have publications as we can show in the 50s which have shown the efficacy and the safety of nostopin it is linked with main full potential therapeutic application amenable to modifications nostopin has astounding profile due to its lack of side effect and additive properties it has also more favorable benefit versus the risk profile as compared to other antitussive mainly when compared with codeine and falcodine. So with all this, probably I should suggest, and as some of the publication quotes, that it's really a veritable antitussive drug. So thank you for your patient hearing.